What's good, everybody? Welcome back into the channel for another episode of our Madden 23 San Antonio Express expansion draft only franchise. After a 2 0 episode to start the season, we had an 0 2 episode last time around. Hoping to avoid that this time around. Um, as we go up against the Saints and Broncos, two pretty solid teams, so it will be tough to get a win. But um, certainly not going to lack for trying here as we will get into our game plan this will be our simulated game got a divisional game in this episode as well so that will be the one that we play try to get a couple touchdowns for Devin Hamilton got to get that touchdown interception ratio to be better it is not good this year at all largely my fault but still, even in simulation last year, he had a really good touchdown-interception ratio in simulation. This year, not as good to start out. And uh, got to turn that around. Got ourselves not, no you know, special scenarios for this week. So just a regular week five matchup against the Saints. Looks like we got some weather going on in here. We are at home. So that does provide a bit of an advantage, but not much of one because Madden has not added any home field advantage for expansion teams or relocation teams, I guess, in this game. And we are the first on the board against the Saints. They will tie it back up. So it looks like it's kind of turned into a little bit more of a defensive game here in the second quarter. We do end up taking the lead at halftime, 14 to 10. Extend it here to a two possession lead. There you go. And we got an 18 point lead going into the fourth quarter, but New Orleans is not going away. They tie it up. And in fact, they win on a last minute touchdown. We had an 18 point lead to start the fourth quarter, and we blew it. That's some me stuff right there. I guess the simulation is uh, doing a good job of simulating what I would do. Jeez, that's bad. Devin Hamilton, 16 to 28, 169 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Not great. Ron Simmons was really good in this game. His best game running as a pro. Although, you know, the last game was also pretty good. Nothing too spectacular on the receiving end for our team. A few sacks allowed. TFLs for Pamphile and Timmy Reed. One and a half sacks for Reed and Bramble. Bramble's had a pretty solid start to the year. The only as Walker missed again. This time it was blocked. So Walker's missed field goals in two of the last three weeks. We've never missed with him yet, but CBU's now missed twice this year already. So already off to a much rockier start in year two than he had his rookie year. As we'll look to upgrade him here. Just go with accuracy. There's no real point to... And just one accuracy. Nice. <laughs> Kicker upgrades, man. They're kind of funny. Um, yeah, just already two misses when he was perfect last year. So that's quite unfortunate. As you assume he's better this year than he was last year. I mean, this one was blocked. How much can you really blame the kicker on that? I guess it kind of depends. We weren't there. Sometimes the block is on the kicker, sometimes it's not. Um, I think we're just going to end up finishing up the coaching tree here. I think we're actually done now, except for the slow ratings, which you don't need, the reset coordinator tree, which you don't need, and unlock a player who doesn't want to resign with you, which we don't need. Everything else we've spent already. So, huzzah, we have completed the coaching tree to its fullest extent. I guess we're just going to accumulate points and then reset a tree just for the yucks from here on out. The Broncos are undefeated. Of course, we got the six overall pick from them last year, so maybe that's cause for us to underestimate them. That should not be the case this time around. This year, they're a lot better. I am very grateful that they sucked last year and decided to be undefeated this year uh, rather than vice versa. We 
kind of probably owe the Broncos for having Kevon Simmons on our team because, as I said, if we didn't have two picks that were high last year, I would have picked Costanzo over Simmons just on the basis of need. But luckily, because we and the Broncos both sucked last year, we had two picks in the top six. And we're able to get both of those players. So, not really as much of a rivalry as we saw last episode where the Chiefs just absolutely obliterated us in the, our first season in the game that we played. And then they were actually also our first ever franchise win that year as well in simulation, which was unfortunate. I was hoping to get the first ever franchise win actually playing, but you know, it is what it is. And then last time, uh, overtime defeat, crushing. Uh, you know, we had that last play to uh, Hazleton where he caught the ball was about a foot out of bounds. That's how close we were to being able to win that game. Ended up losing in overtime. So a lot more of a rivalry brewing so far with the Chiefs than somebody like the Broncos. But, you know, games like this where we're still very new, you know, these tight games where there's a lot of drama or maybe some injuries, whatever, can really set the tone for the start of a rivalry. And so if we can be the first loss for the Broncos here this season, probably go a long way towards them hating us. We are ready to get this game underway. We are in Denver. Did a little bit something special with the uniforms this time. Not like, there's not a lot of uniform options, but the Broncos are going blue. Uh, we did that so that we could do the whites here with the orange pants, as you saw a little bit there. Haven't seen the orange pants with our white uniforms yet. I think they look pretty good. Uh, I, I like this look better than the gray pants. Um, this isn't a look that I don't think we'll be able to pull off often, though, because... We might uh, get a little bit of complaints from a university that might be in the same state as us, that our uniforms are a little bit too much like theirs if we put uh, this color combination on. But, you know, if we do it occasionally, I don't think they'll be mad about it. As much as I would like to just make the white jerseys orange pants, our go-to, you know... Our owner, Peyton, does have to worry about maybe some potential lawsuits coming his way if we were to do that. But let's get this game underway. We will receive the ball first. Kevon Simmons, an electric, electric man with the ball in his hands, gets the first return and gets a solid one out near the 30-yard line. Call it 29. And our offense gets its first shot of the field. Maybe we can score the ball first. We've done a really good job of scoring the ball first in the games that we've played. So hopefully we can keep that streak up. You know, our hot starts have really been what's kept us in it in these games because as the game goes on, the talent discrepancy kind of starts to take over a little bit. And also my inability to not throw interceptions takes over a little bit. This game... I want to take a little bit of a different offensive approach. I've been looking back and I'm just sometimes a little bit too aggressive and I think it's leading to some interceptions. I'm not saying I want to be checked down Charlie all game long, but I just kind of want to be more willing as that's a great block by Lewis Mark to spring Kevon Simmons out to midfield. Gain of 13. I love that uh, pistol counter play when you have a tight end like Lewis Smart. I think he makes that play work really well. But as I was saying, I just want to work more within the offense. I'm going to take what Denver's willing to give me, and hopefully that can result in me playing less mistakes. Um, because really, I mean, if I don't throw some of these interceptions, and some of them I do contend were not my fault, but some of them certainly were. If we can avoid the mistakes, we might, you know not let teams back into the games that we kind of had, you know, the lead in. And so just trying to become a better play caller myself. Running a lot of play action here, and we'll give the ball to Simmons, and he tries to duke up that duke box so far has not resulted in a successful duke all season. Must be because I suck. 
Honestly. Here we go. Second and eight. We're going to just speed underneath to Darius Slayton. Try to pick up a solid game. Third and three. It's a good time to run play action. I've got a few different routes that I think can all be open here. Don't love what I'm seeing. Just going to throw it away. Not try to force anything. We have field goal in our back pocket. I'd rather take that than force something and maybe get nothing out of this drive. And I don't know why they didn't want me to, to go for a field goal there. Definitely. I mean, if it was later in the game and you know, scoring seven was more paramount than scoring three, certainly. But I think right now, for right now, let's just secure a lead. Up three, nothing now. That will be three for three on scoring first uh, so far this season. Doing a good job of that. As Tony Pollard, man, I remember our game last year. Tony Pollard was kind of kind of balling out. He was shredding us up quite a bit. I remember he had one like touchdown. Wow, 17 to 3 is awesome for Russell. It's way better than he deserves. But they are 5-0. Um, at least better than he deserves based on what he's playing this season. I'm not trying to put the man's character into question. But um, yeah, he had that one touchdown catch. That was definitely a touchdown catch, but the men ruled it out of bounds. And then Denver challenged it and they didn't overturn it, but it was like an incredible play. Good, good. It's one of my memorable plays from last year is Jamal Javante, not Jamal Williams, will break out into the open 20 yard rush on his first carry. Big time play. And Denver's already on the move. That's some great blocking there, just absolutely taking Timmy Reed out of that play and finding him on his backside there to finish off as well. But Timmy Reed did a good job of making sure that he had to have two people on him rather than just getting beat by one person allowed. Linebackers to come in and keep it to just a three yard gain. So, yeah, it looks like Timmy Reed just got pushed backwards for 10 yards on his butt, which he did. But he forced them to actually keep two players on him, which is. I guess a silver lining to getting planted on your backside. Russell Wilson's going deep and he's got nothing. That's going to bring up a fourth down. A good stop here by the defense. And we'll, once again, continue our streak of having pretty decent starts to these games. Punter wearing 21. You'll love to see it. Not a great punt by him. you love to see that even more. Nick Bonito down on the play. Going to start this drive off with the run to Kevon Simmons. You really would hope that Snell could get a piece of that linebacker right there. That would have given us opportunity to maybe make something happen there. Going to try this jailbreak screen. It's very interesting to me. I want to just give it a try. And... Work there. Maybe he should have gone inside, but I just feel like he would have followed me inside too. Need some better blocking there from Hazleton to make that work, honestly. And that's a poor accuracy pass. Justin Simmons is all over that route anyhow. Uh, poor accuracy. Might have been the difference between an incompletion and an interception. He is trying to play within the offense here. Still almost threw an interception early in this one. And that's a great punt by Vogel. And the Broncos will start at the six yard line. We got ourselves some special teams players, baby. What? We're terrible defensively and we're not that great offensively, but our special teams, I'll tell you what. Ticker, puncher, returner, you name it. We're good, baby. And that'll be a zero yard middle. Uh, jet sweep play to Devontae Adams. Second and ten now from the six. Can we get a free rusher? We could, but why is Caleb fast on catching that ball? What are you doing, Caleb? That's why we need corner. We need somebody who's not going to do stupid stuff like that. We need somebody who's going to catch the ball. Going deep downfield towards Sutton and it's tipped and tipped. 
and cut what oh my gosh you gotta be kidding me that was tipped like four times by our guys and then Sutton makes the catch oh that was annoying that's why I switch on the DB sometimes because that's what the CB does to you man we have the ball and he just absolutely destroyed Larry Lennon there jeez Williams calm down that's why I'm so tempted to switch on the defensive backs, because that would not have happened if I was one of those users. Not a chance. No! I sold! I thought it was a read option, not a play action. Oh, no. That, I sold straight down the river on that one. You've got to be kidding me, man. Oh. <laughs> that was embarrassing. That play was embarrassing for me. Uh, moving on here, though, <laughs> as Denver's now looking to score here. And Javante Williams with some excellent blocks. Nice maneuvering around the blocks as well with a little bit of patience. Bringing up second in inches. I can't believe Costanza just dove it straight air, dude. Oh, that was so bad. Pretty far with the carry, not able to get anything there. Bringing up 31. Can we get a stop here, please? Can we get a stop here? <laughs> so I can not feel as embarrassed about what I've done. That's going to be a first down and that's going to be a touchdown. Devontae Williams will fall into the end zone. And my embarrassing play will result in a Denver touchdown. That is unfortunate. And the city coming in with a 45-10 win. That's uh, pretty dominant. I'm going to say Costanzo got injured on Get injured on the plate, dove at the air. Let's just pretend that didn't happen and uh, continue on our way, shall we? As we are now trailing here. On Simmons, up near 450 yards on the year through five games. Five games and a quarter, I suppose. Pretty solid start to his year. Definitely on a campaign trying to get him with the of the year so we can get some extra XP. I'm all about the XP on these players. Uh, we gotta develop our guys so that we can actually be good. There, one thing is to have good drafts. Uh, but the more important thing, even when they're good drafts, is to develop good players. Um, what was this blocking? Uh, I guess Lewis Smart just. I mean, Lewis Smart on an edge. He's a good block, run blocker for tight end, but. Not for a tackle. <laughs> so, I'm losing to a guy like Gregory. Can't get too mad at that. We're gonna go over the middle. We got Rambo for the first down and more up to the 41 yard line. Nice job by him finding the open space over the middle. First and 10 now. Looking to go back to that play action game. This play works a lot because there's a lot of routes that can get open. And once again, over the middle, wide open. The Broncos are leaving that part of the field open for us to take advantage of just because we have a short quarterback like Russell Wilson doesn't mean we're gonna avoid the middle like he does so Broncos probably start uh, covering that a little bit gonna run with Kevon Simmons here and get four and that will be how the first quarter comes to a close six first quarter rushes for I thought I said this is five rush plays and I thought uh, Concert's got six rushes. Maybe just didn't count the last play for some weird reason. Back to the play action here on second and seven. And we're going to go for Slayton here. Able to just get past Pat Sertan and I uh, tried to hurdle and it didn't work. I got just folded by Justin Simmons. Eh? Nobody's over Lewis right here. Yes, I do realize it. And yes, I plan on taking advantage of it. Just a quick pass to Smart, right off the rip, and he's going to fall forward into the end zone. Touchdown for the San Antonio Express. And for the first time this year, at least temporarily, I have a game where Hamilton has more touchdown passes than interceptions. I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one. Finally, I got it done. It only took us into our third game to have that, even for but a moment. We'll see if that stands throughout this game. Hopefully it does. And we will 
we take the lead. Also an important part of just what just happened. Ooh, the Eagles are 2-4. That hurts to see, of course, in real life 6-0 right now. Feeling good. Uh, good time to be an Eagles fan. And that's a great return by Pollard, and he's still going. I thought for a moment we were going to let that one break all the way. Ends up getting tackled by kind of that last line of defense before he had, you know, open range of the end zone. So I am grateful for that. Play. Here we go on a first attempt. I'm going to run a little bit of a zone blitz. Zone blitz has not been working for us. Uh, we should probably stop running it. Just man blitz. If we're blitzing, I, I think like man blitz as man blitzes have done better for us. Something back in regular zone coverage may be better, but zone blitzes have never really resulted in pressure for us. The you no. Know, Opposing team's offensive line just knows how to sift through zone blitzes much better than our offensive line does, unfortunately. I mean, I'm sure a lot of their offensive lines are better as Russell Wilson will take off again. And he's breaking tackles. What is this? 20, this is 2024. This is not 2014. Come on. And let's update Russell Wilson's code a little bit, please. He's not like this anymore. It's been couple of years since he's been that way in real life and we're a couple of years further still into his career now. I'm sure he at this point in 2024 will not be doing very much scrambling at all. Russell Wilson has plenty of time. Costanzo's in pursuit. Dives and misses. Tried to get a big hit on Russell Wilson. He ends up sliding to avoid the hit. Wise decision by him. We're going to go back to man coverage here. Man, I, I really wish we had, you know, oh my goodness, Devontae Adams. I really wish we had a secondary that I could trust in man coverage more often. I do believe it's the better coverage in man 23. I just don't think we have the guys to run it, which is why corner is at the top of my list of what I want to make sure drafts. Showed you a little bit in the previous episode, or was it episode one? I can't remember. One of the first episodes of the season that there's only two corners projected in the first two rounds, which is or at least like round one or two. There's a two to three guy, which I guess could go around two, but you know what I mean. It, like at the top end of the draft, who's like actually threatening the first round. There's only two. Not a deep cornerback class. And neither look incredible either, so it's just, oh, I wish the draft could better just conform to my needs. That would be beautiful. Unfortunately, we have not had much luck in that department. Um, we've had good drafts, just not like been able to kind of draft the positions that I absolutely want every time. Like we're sitting here and one of our best players offensively is our tight end too, who makes that play right there for a first down for us. You know, and I'd rather, you know, maybe have a Deacon Burgess style receiver from our Bears franchise in this one. The guy who's coming in at like 85 overall, 98 speed, 90 jumping. 99 jumping, I mean. I like 6 foot 3. I'd love that guy in this series. Haven't been blessed with that. We have like the tight end version of him though, and Lewis Smart. And. Now we're bringing up third and five after a decent run there on second down. Showing too high. Hopefully we can find something underneath with one of these routes that are crossing the field. We can't get Slayton and he's open and he's got room to run. Trying to do not able to get past Mr. Tang. But a nice 12-14 for 130 yards. Very different from what we saw in last episode against the Chiefs where we were just kind of chucking downfield. A lot of incompletions. We're not allowing the pressure to get there oftentimes. And we're just going to throw this one away. You know, trying to get the ball out before pressure gets there. If somebody's open, just take the throw. I may be missing stuff downfield. I don't know. You guys sure could yell at me. But uh, instead, we're just taking the throws that are there. And so far, I think it's working pretty well. I mean... This isn't the super high scoring affair that we've come to see and recognize in the first couple episodes of this year. 
But I believe we're playing better football despite being down. We gotta remember that this is, is an undefeated Broncos team. And Donovan Holmes had, looks like he had a bigger hole there. Ends up closing down. He doesn't have that top end speed to just burst through some of these holes. If the holes are only there for a moment, sometimes they're gonna close before he gets a chance. I'm gonna try to go to Kevon Simmons here. Ended up being more tested than I would have liked, and he's not a great receiving back yet. After I make him like an elite level runner, I do plan on putting a lot of points to the receiving back. I want him to get, he's already kind of close to it, but if we can get him like 90, oh jeez, that was not a good decision by me, I was too distracted. If we can get him to like 90 on everything between truck, step on, juke, spin, I'll probably start putting stuff in the receiving back, or maybe, maybe I will try to see if he can be one of those 99 everything guys. It's going to be super hard to do. But like every one of those ratings is ahead of what his overall is right now. So theoretically, if he averaged one per upgrade, if he could do it, that would be that's would be really hard to accomplish. End up settling for three. They're still down by one, but uh, we're hanging in this game. I think we're playing pretty good football. Just need to get a stop here on this Denver offense, who's been really methodical and good against us. Hard for us to get stops against a team who's willing to methodically take the ball down the field. Of course, we had that one really cheesy, like, four-tipped pass. Come on, man, and this is not Russell Wilson of 2014. Can we stop pretending he is 67 yards? Is he going to have that this year? I don't know. Maybe not. Come on. Got his X-Factor up and running now. Of course he does. Going to bring the blitz, and they almost got there, but he's able to get a pass. And Booker gets broken off. The tackle by Booker gets broken off by, um, what's his name? Cortland Sutton is his name. Forgot it for just a moment there. And Denver continues their basically, you know what this, these Denver drives remind me of? The last one overtime against the Chiefs last episode where it's just like marching towards an inevitable death. Just like no matter what we're doing, Denver's just doing what they want up there on the field. We're trying to send man blitz, zone blitz, drop in zone, have man covered, whatever we're trying, it ain't working. That's going to be a forced incompletion. Very nice. Third and six. Here's our chance to keep the Broncos out of the end zone for the first time since the first drive when we got a stop and that's almost the win. But instead, you know, it's a great pass to Devontae Adams, who, of course, we gave the Broncos. Because I don't know why we gave them to the Broncos. I, I don't. <laughs> well, I mean, it was one thing to enter like a really good division, at least on paper. The uh, AFC West has actually been disappointing compared to like all the preseason hypers. That's a touchdown to Devontae Adams. One thing to choose to play in that division to make a challenging, you know, franchise even harder. It's another thing to give them all like 90 plus overall expect you guys. <laughs> in addition to that, but that is the path I have chosen, and that is the path we will walk this series is they're about to take an eight point lead still time to tie this up two minutes left in this first half Just that Ch fans channel let's go broncos no let's go express baby let's come back and let's tie this game up before the half closes. I think quite a worthy goal. Something that's definitely accomplishable. I don't know if I would actually go for two if we scored a touchdown here though. Might wait a little bit before we get to that point in the game. Let's switch this to slants here. And that's gonna uh, try to get it past that linebacker. Um, so I threw a right to him. 
So not a great throw by me. And Russell Wilson's taking off and did whatever that is. Started as a slide, ended up being a dive. He knows when we're coming, that's great. They run a screen again, so that's a beautiful counter to what we were running. Javante went breaking tackles, getting down to the 16. And the slow march towards death continues. Here, first and 10 from the 16. Once again, already in the red zone are these Broncos. And hey! A drop! Something good happened. Let's go. Wasn't forced by us at all. It was just, you know, a drop. But hey, I'll take it. Going towards the end zone, towards Sutton, and that's that's for a touchdown. We are getting toasted. We are getting toasted by this team. Jeez, this doesn't. It, this looks like SEC coming out to the Mountain West and playing somebody, dude. Maybe not that egregious, but kind of at the same time. Our offense doesn't look hopeless. I mean, we've had just my one stupid mistake trying to throw a screen pass on a screen, a slant past the linebacker, ended up throwing it right to him. But uh, for the most part, our offense has been solid, but our defense. We had to stop on the first drive, other than that, it's been all touchdown. We can't even keep the Broncos. I'm scoring touch. We can't even force a field goal. It's all touchdowns all the time. It'll be a catch over the middle. Bottom of the head. We'll get the first down. We're gonna do a run play here. And oh, jeez, the first half run. I honestly just barely realized with one second left. That's a sell. Let's just run some verts, baby. Let's chuck it downfield. Oh, man. That's an obvious sell job by me. Let's just get some empty stats here for, for this one for the half closes. Probably could have made something out of that drive had I realized the first half was basically over. Instead... <laughs> We will get nothing. Would have loved to make something out of that drive, but I have a little bit more awareness. Thirteen to twenty-eight. That is easily the worst halftime deficit we've had. Trying to fight back here in the third quarter. Let's try to go and get this done. Javante Williams just embarrasses Bramble there. He the ball on the play. Some of these step arms by Javante Williams are nasty. And caught! Puts the boss. Looks like he may have had a chance at it for a moment, but Russell Gage ends up with the reception. For the Broncos. Of course, Russell Wilson's been in his X Factor now for that. what seems like forever. Can't get a sack on him, of course. Why would we be able to do one of those? I don't know. Our defensive line is not great. Makes some sort of sense why we can't get any tackles. I mean, sacks. Should be able to get tackles. If we couldn't even tackle these guys, that would be something else. Second and 11. Nice run stop there. And now Timmy Reed is in the zone. Let's see if we can get a pass rush win. And nope, he gets stopped up and probably wouldn't have been able to get there to stop that out route. Anyway, third one. The slow death march of the Denver Broncos. The unstoppable death march. No matter what I do, they keep on marching slowly towards the end zone. Every single time, 15 at 20, 116 yards. And three touchdowns for Russell Wilson. So yeah, this Broncos team is pretty good. 
Only the second most embarrassing dive that I've had in this game. Oh man, this is painful for me to watch. This is I'm sure it's even more painful for anyone watching. This. Jeez, dude. I might have to start asking for a mercy killing at this point. And okay. Russell Gage was wide open, no one else is even in the frame with him, and that's going to be a touchdown again for the Muppets. Mercy. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Let's go, let's go. You know, we're a touchdown away for making this just a two position game, we're good. I mean, it doesn't matter that our defense is giving up five straight touchdown guys, but you know. We can still make this a two possession game with a touchdown here. Come on, Simmons. We'll get out to the 22. And that's where we will start our drive. The beginning of our comeback. Right here. Start with a jet pass here to go. Uh, no, not to Kevon Simmons. It's to Rainbow. It told me it was to Simmons. But I guess I need to run it from the opposite way if I want it to be to Simmons. I guess. Simmons is on the field for that play. Oh boy. This this game's getting ugly. If it doesn't get better here soon, I'm not sure I'm gonna make you guys watch you know an entire second half. It's gotta we gotta get some improvements here, and that's not gonna help our cause. Okay. Third and thirteen. See if we can pick it up here with some vertical concepts. Gonna go underneath the Simmons, who's can't really run by people. Can't run by Blake Martinez. Okay. We're punting. What was a close game until about midway through the second, for sure, has quickly become an absolute dominating performance by these guys. And if the Broncos score another touchdown here, we might call for the mercy killing. It's getting that bad. I'm not like frustrated because it's not like Madden Cheese or anything. It's just like this. We are hopeless in this game. And it's, it's not fun being, playing it. And I basically had to go from a rush to a coverage play right there. I saw how wide open that guy was. Not because like I'm a pressure with Matt and cheese or anything. I feel like Matt actually hasn't cheesed me out of anything in this game, other than maybe that you know, tipped deep ball, which you can expect at least a couple of Madden cheese plays a game. It's just this game is painful for me to play. I'm sure it's painful for you to watch. If, if you're enjoying this, I'm sorry. I. <laughs> I don't know why you would be. We are getting absolutely smoked on both sides of the ball at this point. This game. Holy crap. There's nothing we can do to stop this team. Russell Wilson gaining his mobility back here at the age of 37 is something else. Nice run stop there, though, to bring up second and eight. If we can hold them to a field goal here, though, we'll keep playing. That's my challenge to my defense. Hold him to a field goal here, baby. For the first time this game, let's do it. Sansa with the win off the edge. <laughs> and that's a beautiful throw and catch. You gotta tip your cap. But as I said, why can't I? Why can't I do it? It's bad in telling me I shouldn't do it. Why can't I do it? I just want the pain to end. Come on, men. Let me have my mercy killing. Oh, it's because there's a boot boot boot, that's why. I was like, can you just not do it between a touchdown and an extra point? That seems odd. I'm going to end the pain. I'm going to ask for the mercy rule. 
and we're just gonna simulate out this game. We did it once last year too. Sometimes if I just feel like the game's gotten out of hand and there's no use seeing the rest, I'll do it. Yeah, I don't. What did you all too often? But I, I think sometimes it is just necessary just to kind of spot myself the game of a game as Russell Wilson throws six touchdowns against us. That's that's nasty. On Simmons, just ten rushes, forty nine yards on those rushes. Just, his yards per carry have been really good. Touchdown, uh, touchdown a sack a lot by each of our tackles. Uh, no sacks. Yeah, we did We did nothing to disrupt this offense. Uh, Russell Wilson was just turned into, you know, 2014 Russell Wilson or 20 whatever his prime was. It resulted in a very tough loss for our team. By far the biggest blowout of this year. I mean, I think we had like a blowout in simulation against the Seahawks as well, where we got blown out. But in terms of the games we've played, easily the most overmatched we've been. Next week, we've got the bye and the Panthers. It'll also be week eight. So this will be, next episode will be the start of our draft preview as well as we get those ranges and all that info. But that's all I have for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you then.